Hello and welcome to this Docker tutorial series. So yeah, in this series, we are going to learn about what is Docker, uh, what is containerization and uh, many other technologies and terms related to uh, the Docker and containerization overall. Uh, okay, so Docker basically is a containerization platform. Uh, in short, what you can use Docker for is uh, by for installing uh, your application in an isolated space. Right, right so that they don't directly interact with your operating system there are many reasons why you would want to do that including security and uh, as well as ease of installation and removal and so on uh, and docker helps you with that so before docker before understanding docker and containerization overall you need to understand what exactly a virtual machine is now if you know all these terms if you know containerization and all feel free to skip this video uh, i'll be starting with the code in the next video uh, here I'll be talking about mostly the theory part. Okay, so VM stands for virtual machine. Now, what happens if you want to install an application but not directly on your own operating system? Let's say you are on Windows, right? So what you uh, you can do is uh, this is like older way to achieve the uh, the same effect. So you can what you can do is you can use a software called as hypervisor. Okay, so hypervisor is nothing but a software uh, something like VirtualBox or VMware, a software that can help you with uh, running the operating systems on your own operating system. Okay, so things like let's say you want to run Linux on your Windows, you can do that. You want to run Windows on your Linux, you can do that. Any number of uh, such permutation combinations are possible with the help of Hypervisor. Now, Hypervisor is the software that helps managing all the uh, the entire virtual machine. Right, this is one VM. Uh, so in this diagram, you basically have three different virtual machines. So uh, now what happens is you, you, when you create a one virtual machine, you allocate entire dedicated resources to it. Because remember, it's an entire operating system running inside your own op operating system. Okay. So this is basically like your hardware plus, you know, you know, of, uh, in, you can call it infrastructure basically. Okay. So uh, it's an entire dedicated instance of an OS. So it's going to need all the dedicated RAM, uh, CPU, uh, hard drive space, and all those things that your generic OS needs, right? Because this is nothing different than your normal operating system. And what you can do is after that, you can use it just like, uh, you can use this operating system just like if it is installed on your hardware directly. It's hypervisor's job to communicate and translate the uh, the the instructions from this OS to the uh, to the hardware directly. Uh, now inside this OS, it could be any OS. Inside this OS, you would install the your applications that you wanted to have uh, in isolated space. Like it could be a database, it could be a, a browser, it could be uh, tools like uh, Photoshop, or it could be anything else. Okay, uh, that app. If it is uh, if it is if it needs some libraries like uh, C C plus plus header libs libraries and all, it's gonna use it from the operating system that is uh, inside the the, uh, the virtual machine the guest. <coughs> okay, and you can have any number of such VMs. Now the uh, it definitely solves the problem of isolating the processes. It definitely gives you the security because even if you are installing MongoDB on this VM. Uh, and you are installing the same MongoDB on this VM. They are both different instances of MongoDB. They are totally two different, uh, totally two different because they are inside two different virtual machines, right? So they won't know about each other. The problem with this is it's heavy in pro process uh, because your entire resources are now divided into number of VMs. Okay, you have to. If, of course, it is not equally, but you have to dedicate some part of your hardware to that VM. Okay, so uh, it's going to share all your hardware directly and it's going to dedicate to the OS. So the, it's it's definitely heavy. Uh, it, the duplication is there because if you are installing two operating systems as same OS, unnecessarily it's going to repeat all the uh, kernel and every single thing that is required just to have a new different app in, in two different VMs. Okay, so the, this problem can be solved by containers. So containers is the uh, containers is the technology which gives us all the same uh, options, uh, the the pros as of a VM that it can you can isolate these apps as well as 
uh, they are definitely they are much more lightweight than here because you don't dedicate your entire resources to an os inside a container container this part is a container now okay so a container is nothing but your your app that you need to run and the libraries and any other things that that app requires okay so we'll learn about the con uh, you know terminologies like images and containers and all in later part but this is basically one uh, we call it an image but uh, ultimately it's a container so this container now docker this is your docker now docker understands how to run this container and how to translate the instructions from this to your os level okay it uses uh, many new things from your uh, os but we should not talk about it at the moment uh, but it is possible to do this without having a new dedicated instance of os here just like we had in vms like this okay and that's why they are much more lightweight they're portable because you see now your app doesn't care about which os it is running on as long as that operating system can run the docker your app will run fine right even if your operating system is windows mac linux if they can run docker they will be able to run your application and they are much more efficient than vm because of course they are lightweight okay so and this is nothing but you know the entire containerization in theory which uh, we will see in practice soon uh, and docker is the tool there are many such tools available docker was uh, docker is one of the most popular one uh, most widely adopted one as well so docker helps you do all these things so what you can do with docker is you can install the apps quickly if you want to have them uh, it could be any application it could be node.js it could be uh, a mongodb as we saw in the examples it could be firefox or anything else that you want to have you can just run one command and the software will be installed on your machine any uh, because it's uh, in isolated space it's in remember it's uh, something like it's installed inside docker okay technically it's not correct but docker is handling where it is being installed and all so now you can also remove it quickly if you don't if you're done with that application so overall it helps us managing the uh, and of course isolating the processes and all uh, in in theory it's much bigger than that uh, so what we are going to learn is uh, so two terminologies before diving into the uh, theory of container uh, sorry practical of containerization the first one is image what's an image so image is basically like a photocopy of your app what is and steps uh how to run your application so image is you can think of it as a photocopy uh if iso is something that you have heard of like uh, windows iso or linux iso and something like that which you download and you you know flash it on your usb and then you you are able to install the os it is something like that uh, what you can do with uh, an image is you can download that image on your machine and docker will be able to actually create the app out of it and because the running instance is different than the actual image docker can spawn any number of such uh, image uh, containers that you want okay so of course the next part is the container itself uh, container is nothing but the instance of that image now remember these instances are totally isolated they don't know about each other it, you can modify change whatever you want to do with them uh, they will be the, it will be done in an, their own isolated space okay so image only helps creating the containers and the container is actually the instance of the image okay uh, so i hope that makes uh, the at least basic concepts of docker clear uh, in the next video we're going to learn about how to run docker okay thanks